Chapter 24, Property Insurance. When you own real property, there's always a risk that that property could be damaged. It could be a house fire, or it could be something beyond your control. It could be a hurricane that's coming through. It could be a tornado. So there's lots of different things that could happen with your property. And so whenever you own real property, it is highly recommended that you have property insurance. Now, I say that because highly recommended because if you pay cash for the property or if you own it free and clear, you don't have to have insurance. You can run the risk of not having coverage. If you have a mortgage on the property, though, the insurance company will require that you have insurance on the property. If you're closing on a brand new house, they will not allow you to purchase the property without proof of insurance. Fire is actually the single most important cause of property damage in the United States. So fire insurance is the foundation of property damage policies. Here we have some insurance terms. We have the insured, which is the homeowner. The insurer is the insurance company. And the insurance premium is the payment that you make each year. As I mentioned earlier, fire is the most common risk. But there's other things that could happen as well. So the basis of most policies is going to be to protect you from a house fire. Now, if you want protection from other things, then you can add what they call endorsements or attachments or riders to your insurance policy. So you would have a basic policy. And then if you want to add additional things, it would extend coverage to losses by some of the different perils that are listed here. So it could be hail, tornado, earthquake, riots. I don't think we have to worry about that in our area, but you know, in large cities, that could potentially be an issue. Windstorms, smoke damage, explosions, glass breaks, water pipe leaks, vandalism, freezing, and then building collapse. So these are some of the additional things that you can add to basic policies. The policy that you have for the home that you live in as your primary residence is called your homeowner policy. And this is going to contain coverage deemed by the insurance experts to be the most useful to people who actually own a home or own the home in which they live. What happens if you are not a homeowner? What if you're renting? So in a situation where you're renting, you still probably have some personal property that means a lot to you. And so you can get a tenant's policy. This is coverage for your personal property when you are a tenant. It might sometimes be referred to as a condominium policy, depending on what type of property you're actually renting. But it's actually a really good idea because in the event that there is damage to the property, it could be that you're living in an apartment building and let's just say that the apartment above you floods and it causes your apartment to flood, right? There's nothing that you can do about that. And so if your personal property is damaged, a tenant's policy will help you to replace the damaged property. Now keep in mind, this is personal property because you are a tenant. A lot of insurance companies will allow you to bundle renter's insurance with your car insurance. So if you don't have tenant's policies or renter's insurance and you are renting and you have things of value to you that you want to protect, it might be a good idea to look into it. What about liability coverage? What if something happens someone is injured while they're on your property. So liability coverage is a policy for you and all the people that are members of your family that live with you. It's designed to protect you from any kind of financially crippling claim or lawsuit because someone is injured while they're on your property. So it could be something as simple as a babysitter getting hurt, the cleaning lady gets hurt. You know, if you have a farm like we do and we have a lot of people coming onto the property, different times of the year with heavy equipment and doing different jobs, it's possible that someone could get injured. So medical payments typically will be allowed for minor injuries. And then you also have endorsements like workers' compensation insurance, which would help to cover if anyone is injured and they do make a claim against you. I mentioned at the very beginning of this presentation that if you are obtaining a loan to buy a house, the lender requires that you have a homeowner's insurance policy on the house because the property is security for the loan and they need to make sure that if anything were to happen with the property, if there was a flood, if there was a tornado, if there was a fire, that the insurance money would help to cover to replace the property. 
Now, another thing that you want to consider is if you are in a flood zone, the lender is also going to require that you have flood insurance. There again, this is one of those things that is required specifically by the lender. If you are buying a piece of property that is in a flood zone and you are paying cash for it, you can opt out of flood insurance if you want to. That is your risk. But if you are obtaining a policy uh, because you are buying a house through a lending institution, you are required to prove that you have obtained that policy. Whenever you have a homeowner's insurance policy, they will guarantee replacement cost. So replacement cost is going to be the cost that it takes to replace the property. So the replacement cost today, not necessarily market value, but replacement cost. One of the other things that you want to think about, particularly for those of you who are tenants, it could be that whenever you sign a lease, that the landlord has a policy that you are required to have renter's insurance. Some landlords require it and some don't. So whenever you're reading your lease, make sure that you know what the requirements are from the landlord. So that's it guys. That would be chapter, what chapter is this? Chapter 24. You're seeing some terms here that I did not talk about, so don't worry about those. Just focus on the slides that I did go over and you'll be good to go.